Bienvenidos a un nuevo segmento de CRF News, un espacio que tenemos dedicado para las mejores presentaciones de nuestros programas académicos aquí en el CRF. Eso es un programa en colaboración con la revista colombiana de cardiología. Hoy tenemos una charla muy especial que es dada por el doctor Vino Turani de Georgetown University que fue dado en el Structural Heart Disease Summit este año que habla acerca del enfoque que se llama minimalista en el procedimiento del reemplazo valvular percutáneo eh, aórtico. Eso es muy interesante porque el proceso de la intervención minimalista empezó en Europa al principio tratando de disminuir la cantidad de intervenciones y la necesidad de imágenes complejas durante el procedimiento de eh, TAVR. Y básicamente cuando se empezó con el proceso de TAVR en los Estados Unidos se involucraron muchos eh, mecanismos, procesos, imagenologías, dispositivos que han hecho este procedimiento eh, demasiado costoso. Entonces en este momento hay dos escuelas, una escuela eh, europea que es muy minimalista, muy simplista, no necesariamente inferior, y otra que es más compleja que utiliza imagenología mucho más eh, eh, compleja con múltiple uso de closure devices, la necesidad de utilizar un eh, OR híbrido, etcétera, etcétera. Entonces ha sido una batalla entre los dos mundos en cuanto es en realidad importante eh, hacer estos procedimientos mucho más costosos y más complejos o podemos utilizar un método que es mucho más simple, minimalista y lograr los mismos eh, objetivos de pronóstico clínico. Esta charla básicamente nos va a responder esa pregunta. Es una charla muy interesante, una charla excelente con un gran speaker que eh, la dio a, hace apenas unos meses. Espero que la disfruten. So, um, I'm going to change it a little bit. Sorry, Sushil, or the organizer. So, the minimum strategy should be used in all TAVR patients. There's mine. Used in most TAVR patients. I've decided to have the privilege of changing that. Let's, these are my disclosures. So, you know, Dr. Leon and all of us in the world have shown this all the time, right? The first transcatheter valve done by um, uh, Caribbean. Guess what, by the way, uh, Sushil, he was, this was done minimalist. Just, I just want to point it out, okay, that this was done effectively in minimalist techniques. Well, let me show you kind of more um, what's happened more recently. Movement to the minimalist approach has been to minimize the goal, minimize the cost. Patient safety is paramount. Really want to ensure procedural refinement first and foremost. It's got to be a reveal. Uh, the case has to be really reviewed in detail with the heart team, and the formal decision tree has to be made. And really, all members of the heart team have to agree to this. And so, in my opinion, this is kind of the minimalist candidate. Almost everybody, but basically those with good vascular access, a weight that's respectable, coronary that uh, you can close the artery, coronary arteries are, uh, coronary arteries are acceptable um, for height. Any barriers to emergent indication are taking out of the picture. Uh, those who can lay down flat for an hour and mental status appropriate. If that's the case, yes, minimalist TAVR should be done. If that is not the case, then a standard TAVR that Sushil is going to propose should be done. But also, what is the minutia of minimalist? It should be peripheral access, groin, chest prep, blood, levofed, plavix, all the regular stuff. We're not missing anything really within the minimalist pathway. It's just a, uh, uh, a floor to cath lab to floor kind of pathway that we're talking about. And who are the patients who shouldn't have non-ICU wards? This is a list of them for the sake of time. I won't go through those, but this has been very well vetted out that you can perform the minimalist going to a non-ICU pathway relatively expeditiously. So I'm going to show you data on minimalist. You know, let's talk about data. Let's be objective about this. So here are 1,100 minimalist TAVR patients done uh, that uh, we were able to do while I was in Atlanta. And we broke it down into Sapien, Sapien XT, and Sapien 3. Let's forget about the Sapien. Let's forget about the Sapien T, uh, XT. Let's just talk about almost 800 minimalist done mean age of 79, you can see the pacemaker rate pre-op was 14.5% and their STS prom is five. So we're talking about now 800 minimalist patients using the pathway that I just showed you. Intubation during the procedure was in 1% of patients, relatively low. It was lower than compared to when we first started at 5%. Conversion to open heart surgery, less than 1%. Need for a second valve, less than 1% coronary obstruction, less than 1%. And you see over and over again that the outcomes for this show, or at least procedural outcomes, are a less than a 1% complication rate. 
Only 20% required ICU stay. You can see the post-operative length of stay was average of two days. Uh, major strokes, 0.8%. And you can see the pacemaker implantation was 7%. Again, we're talking about only safe in three. All patients undergoing minimalist are in hospital mortality, less than 1%. So here you are showing data for minimalist being able to be done with a low procedural outcomes issue. When you look at 30 days, you're looking at mortality of 1.1% in 800 patients. And remember, the predicted was 5%. And so you're talking about a lower than a, almost a 0.2 observed to expected ratio. And you can see the readmissions, uh, cardiovascular reasons are 5%, some of the lowest that you've seen, mainly because these patients have had a very minimal um, uh, attack on their body from a variety of other stuff. And when you look at one-year outcomes, you see the mortality is 7%, in line with what, with, with what we've seen before across the board. So if you look at, and this is, Becky, I put this slide in for you, just for you, no one else. So here's echocardiography for 30 days, right? So you're seeing LVF is fine, mean gradient is, relative, is low. Greater, it's a 3.7% moderate, greater than moderate uh, PV leak rate, 0% of patients with uh, severe AI. So this is now with the SAPEN3 valve showing a uh, majority of the patients, 97% of the patients having nothing more than uh, mild or lower. And when you look at this at one year, it's about 5% overall moderate AI rate. Again, low, these are patients who did not have a TEE. So it's not just one institution. Here's a multi-institutional study by David Wood, who really did a phenomenal job uh, at this study. And really, again, a minimalist periprocedural pathway, a post-procedural pathway, and a criteria-driven discharge. And what he's shown is very similar outcomes with very low uh, mortality and stroke across the board, and even in some sites that were relatively low volume. And you can see their mortality uh, at 30 days was very similar to our mortality at 30 days at 1.5%. And again, not major difference between low, medium, or high volume centers. And here you can see from David's uh, study <clears throat> that we were a part of, you can see the median length of stay was one day instead of two days, but again, uh, using um, uh, the balloon expandable valves. There are criticisms of the minimalist tavern, and they're here. And I think that TE is one of the questions whether that really becomes an issue and whether you're seeing all of the um, uh, paravival leak. I would uh, argue to say that the angi angiogram and the trans thoracic and the hemodynamics is very powerful with all three of those are used. The complication management uh, is surgical. Not true. I just showed you that everything is less than 1%. Uh, sterile environment, the OR versus cath lab. SB is not, there is no difference between cath lab and OR for SB prophylaxis or uh, patients coming back. And, but you do have to have patient and operator comfort, and I agree with that, and there are really tips and tricks to make that better. And at the end of the day, critical patient selection is paramount. So the minimum phase of tower can be performed safely with an overall mortality of less than 1%, complication rate less than 1%. Uh, for patients at 30 days. There is no apparent learning curve for MATAVR, as we've noted here, and that minimalist TAVR can be done with minimal or no ICU support. Remember, 80% of patients don't require an ICU, and this has a significant cost savings, which I didn't have the time.